My name is Rodney Virick. I'm with the Space Weather Prediction Center, which is part of NOAA's National Weather Service. I'm the chief scientist responsible for the research that's done as part of the Space Weather Prediction Center. For space weather, there are many different, just like terrestrial weather, there are many different ways in which space weather manifests itself. One of the only ways that you can actually experience space weather yourself is when you see the aurora. So that we run this model now in real time and it provides a short forecast of about 30 minutes. Uh, so we give you a 30 minute warning to where the aurora will be and how bright it will be. That's the basis for this presentation. I have then taken the model output and modified it slightly to make it appropriate for science on a sphere and that's what you're seeing here. The model is driven by the solar wind. So between Earth and the Sun, there's actually a wind of particles and magnetic field, and this model takes that solar wind input. We have a satellite that sits partway towards the Sun that measures the solar wind, and from the measurements on that satellite, we then can predict where and how bright the aurora will be. And so it's a, it's a model that has developed just to do exactly that, take the solar wind and then predict where on Earth you can see the aurora. The aurora, as I indicated, was is, is originated from particles from the solar wind. These particles are sent from the sun when you have a major solar flare or s coronal mass ejection. You get a lot of particles traveling at very high speeds and when they come to Earth they interact with the Earth's magnetic field and these particles will then come spiraling down Earth's magnetic field, collide with the atmosphere, and when that collision occurs, you, it excites the atmosphere, and that causes light, the light you see when you go out and look at the aurora. Um, but this particular model simply has a scale that starts with green as sort of less intense aurora and then turns red as it gets more and more intense, but the colors do not necessarily reflect uh, the colors, the exact colors of what you might expect to see. So if you imagine the Earth as a magnet, the aurora occurs near the poles because the magnetic field lines of Earth tend to come together at the high north and south pole. One of the things you'll notice is that if I put on here latitude-longitude grid, you can see that the aurora is not centered over the geographic pole. In fact, it's centered on the magnetic pole, which is somewhere up in northern Canada. So as the Earth rotates and the aurora rotates with it, the aurora sort of sticks uh, much like the day-night terminator. Uh, it, it rotates uh, differently than the Earth. You can see that it's actually rotating about a point in the northern part of Canada and not rotating around the North Pole itself. I think it's a great way to visualize the aurora because space weather is really fun to watch and beautiful to watch. If you could only see the aurora live, then that's one of the perhaps limitations. But it also shows people where the aurora is and how it changes and how space weather can reach from the poles right down to the parts of the world that they live in. So I think it helps bring space weather to a, to a place that people can actually start to realize and, and visualize.